From KPU News in Austin, you're watching Texas This Week with Ashley Goodo. Good Sunday morning and thank you for tuning into the first Texas This Week of the new year, a year that promises to be filled with big political moments. It is an election year after all. In fact, some Austin voters are heading to the polls this month. We'll get to more on that in just a moment, but let's start with the three things you need to know in Texas politics. This week, Texas Governor Greg Abbott teased a major announcement was coming Saturday. The big news, the formal launch of his re-election campaign. Governor Abbott made the announcement at the Hispanic Leadership Summit in McAllen. The Rio Grande Valley has become a battleground for Texas Republicans hoping to attract traditionally Democratic voters. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick is recovering from COVID-19. On Monday, Patrick's campaign released a statement revealing the top Republican tested positive for the virus the week before, but is now testing negative and is completing a quarantine period. The lieutenant governor had mild symptoms. Some critics blasted Patrick for not announcing his diagnosis until after he tested negative. Texas's near total ban on abortion was back on the court docket Friday. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals heard arguments on whether state medical licensing officials can revoke medical licenses for doctors and nurses who violate the law. The law bans abortions once fetal cardiac activity is detected, which is typically six weeks into a pregnancy before many women know they're pregnant. It is enforced through civil lawsuits rather than criminal penalties. The judges indicated they are likely to send the case to the Texas Supreme Court, which means it could take months for a ruling. Early voting starts tomorrow for residents in Austin's 4th District in the race to replace City Council Member Greg Kassar. Kassar is stepping down to run for Congress and seven candidates are looking to replace him. This morning, we're introducing you to the candidates. Austin's 4th Council District encompasses parts of Central and East Austin, stretching west of I-35 from Breaker Lane to just south of Canyon Lane and east of the interstate from just north of Runberg Lane down to East 51st Street. Seven candidates are running to represent their neighbors on the council. We'll introduce you to them in the order they appear on the ballot. Amanda Rios is a former literacy specialist and now bilingual homeschool teacher. I have lived in Austin for 30 years and specifically on the east side of Austin for the last 13 years. I am a certified bilingual teacher and have taught in um, Title I public schools such as Blackshear, Pecan Springs, Joslin. The biggest issues right now facing Austin are safety, affordability, um, and addressing crime in our neighborhoods in, in a logical, compassionate, effective manner. Um, you know, in, in terms of safety, um, and, and livability, we, we have seen such a decrease in safety, um, in our communities. We've seen an increase in robberies, in homicides, um, and because of the, the current situation, there are no consequences for crimes that are being committed. And this has led to a very dangerous situation in our district for businesses, residents, children, um, for all people. Issa Bunto is an artist and art teacher at Navarro Early College High School. I have worked with uh, many different peoples from, from all walks of life. I am an educator. I'm an artist. Uh, I am a community um, member and um, I service the community. I serve on the North Austin Civic Association uh, contact planning team where we do review um, zoning policies. I uh, served as vice president and co-president of the North Austin Civic Association and I do work for Austin Mutual Aid. The biggest issue that uh, we keep hearing about and um, my friends and um, colleagues are always trying to figure out uh, how to get uh, by uh, living in Austin is affordability. We can't afford to live here. Um, we can't afford our homes. We can't even afford renting. We have to build housing. And in order to build housing, we have to look at um, these outdated zoning policies. Uh, a lot of um, properties are being proposed. Some policies are, are um, needing updates. Uh, that hasn't happened. Uh, we're looking at um, you know zoning being approved for um, developments 
um, in, in, in lieu of giving a certain percentage for um, affordable housing, giving vouchers to people. But are those really long-term solutions? I, I don't believe so. I want long-term solutions to housing. Ramsey Seta Penre is a self-described eco-socialist who ran against Greg Kassar for this council seat in 2020. We reached out for an interview but did not get a response. Melinda Shira is a marketing data analyst who owns her own business. I have been very active in the District 4 community for a very long time. I purchased my first home in 2011 and became active immediately with the North Austin Civic Association. I have been active since the very first Project Connect and the very first Code Next. I um, have led communications for all of the North Austin Civic Association and for several efforts along the way, whether it was um, safer housing for Austin or um, when 10-1 was first implemented and bringing together the entire district at that time. I think the biggest issue facing District 4, but also all of Austin is affordable housing. My idea is to focus on those future rail lines and ensure that we're adding density along the rail lines. I do want to encourage a safe, connected, walkable city and District 4 and think that we will go a long way by adding density along our rail lines. Jade Lavera is the chief strategy officer for women who work in organizations supporting women. I am born and raised in Austin. I've been in district for my entire life. So I am a expert in that right from the neighborhood resident perspective. And I also bring experience that is not currently seen on council in uh, housing management in multifamily housing. I have worked with developers. I have sort of been um, exposed to land use and zoning and code enforcement, code compliance and things like that. And that I think sets me apart and will allow me to bring real world experience into City Hall. In District 4 specifically, public safety is probably the highest concern we have the highest crime in all of Austin. And I have seen that fluctuation throughout my life. Um, I do believe that we need to bring police to our community, community policing and rebuild the trust and connection between police and the residents. Police reform is needed in that and adjustments to the police contract, of course, um, but there needs to be a positive presence in order to make our residents feel safe. Monica Guzman is the policy director of GAVA, a neighborhood coalition promoting healthy living in East Austin. I'm native Austinite. I am the neighborhood candidate. I have a proven track work record of working with our communities. I'm a community organizer who has worked with and supported low income residents to increase access to a healthier lifestyle, to stop gentrification and displacement in our neighborhoods. I'm a member of the Reimagining Public Safety Task Force, and I was the chair of the Restore Runberg Revitalization Team. The biggest issue is housing, housing affordability, deeply affordable. Uh, to address it, there's a couple of different things. Some take longer than others, but the two that would probably, uh, I would definitely focus on first is one, to increase the reach of the rehabilitation program and we have property owners who have affordable market rate properties, but as they get older uh, and the habitability requires rehabilitation, it gets expensive, so they tend to sell, do a free market sell. You expand the program that allows them assistance in rehabilitating the property and still maintaining affordability. The other one is back in 2018, then Mayor Pro Tem Tovo sponsored a resolution, a right to stay uh, preference policy. As a council member, I would uh, expand uh, or fully implement and strengthen that policy. Jose Chito Vega is a criminal defense and immigration attorney. When I was uh, at the LBJ School of uh, Public Affairs, uh, I was a city manager. 
for a small city in uh, South Texas. Uh, I worked for the uh, city of Laredo actually for a couple of years. Uh, and uh, then after I became an attorney, I was uh, I worked in the attorney general's office and then uh, was general counsel for a state representative. Uh, and in addition to that, I served as um, uh, Austin planning commissioner appointed by Greg Kassar for about three years. We've got to get housing price prices under control. We've got to address the housing crisis. We probably need to pass uh, $250 million for affordable housing every two years in Austin for the next 20 years. Uh, we just need to steadily uh, and, and consistently add to our, our, our government housing, our, our subsidized housing uh, for those people at the lowest level of uh, incomes who will never uh, sadly, be able to afford kind of a market rate apartment, uh, a market rate home here in Austin. But the other solution is that we need to build more houses. Uh, we have been very uh, tight about adding housing in Austin, and uh, uh, there's no question that that is uh, contributing to the, uh, the, the, the rise in uh, prices here in Austin. You can find more information on all of the candidates and the election at KVU.com. Early voting runs January 10th through the 21st. The last day to apply for a mail-in ballot is this Friday, and election day is January 25th. That's Texas This Week.